My guest, John Bevere, wrote a book, The Bait of Satan, that sold over three million copies. But his brand new book will be the most important book he ever wrote. Next. Welcome, Holy Spirit. I surrender this platform to you. Take over. It's your platform. John says there is something utterly lacking in the church. What happened in 1994 and what is utterly lacking? Well, Sid, 1994, I'm speaking at a conference, biggest church in the entire region, and I spoke on the fear of the Lord. And the next night, I was speaking the second night, the pastor got up, which I thought was going to be a routine introduction, and he said to the people, I want to protect you from the error that was taught last night. John began to, John spoke to us about an Old Testament theology, the fear of the Lord. As New Testament Christians, we don't need to fear God. God's not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind, and perfected love casts out fear. Then he introduced me, Sid, and it was the hardest service I think I've ever done. <laughs> the next morning, I went out and I found a construction site. It was deserted. It's a Saturday morning. And I start saying, God, I'm so sorry. How have I hurt your church? I, I'm putting people in bondage. Please, please help me. And the more I prayed, the more I felt the absolute pleasure of the Lord. And before that time of prayer was out, I found myself in that construction site crying out to know the holy fear of God. So it is what is utterly missing right now, the awe or the fear of the Lord. Okay, now bumping into 1997, Brazil. What happened there? First time ever in that nation, I was so excited. I fly down, I'm preparing them, the Friday night speaker for the national conference. They drive me there, the arena is completely packed. They put me on the platform, and the, the worship team was unreal, just the best in the nation. But I noticed immediately the glaring lack of the presence of God, and I was confused. These are all believers, best worship team in the nation. What's going on? I bowed my head. I said, Holy Spirit, where's your presence? I open my eyes and I see what I didn't see before. I see people standing there during the worship like this, looking around, their hands in their pocket, looking down. They're walking in and out of the arena, getting concessions. They're talking to one another, fumbling through their purses. I thought, this will stop. Well, then the worship's over, and now because there's no music, you can now hear a mutter from the people still talking to each other, and yet, the leader is reading scripture. So I'm like furious. And the Holy Spirit whispers to me and he said, son, you need to deal with this. So I remember, how do I deal with this? I walk up to the pulpit, my interpreter's beside me, and I just stared at the people. I didn't say a word for 60 seconds. Now when you're the Friday night guest speaker at the national convention and you're not saying a word, it gets everybody's attention. The muttering stopped, every eye was on me. I said, I have got two questions. Those are the first words I ever spoke in Brazil. Question number one, you're sitting talking to somebody sitting across the table. The whole time you are, they got their arms crossed looking around, they got their hands in their pocket looking down and they're whispering to somebody beside them. Would you continue to talk to them? No. I said, I have been in this arena for an hour and a half, and there's not an ounce of the presence of God, because Psalm 89, verse 7 says, God is to be greatly feared in the assembly of the saints, and to be held in reverence by all those that surround Him. For the next 75 minutes, I preached them on the fear of the Lord. I said to them, if the president of your nation would have walked in this arena tonight, you would have given him 10 times the respect you gave Holy Spirit. I said, if Pele, your greatest soccer player ever, would have walked on this platform, you would have been on the edge of your seats anticipating every word. You have given no respect to the Spirit of God. Well, at the end of 75 minutes of preaching on the holy awe of God, I said, everybody in here, you say you're a believer, but you lack the fear of God and you're willing to repent. Stand up. They stand up and the presence of God fills the arena. People start weeping. And so it lifted a little and, and, and I felt like lead them in a prayer of repentance. Another wave came in. It was so wonderful. Now you got people weeping. I can hear him sobbing. Well, then it lifts and the Spirit of God spoke to me, Sid, and said, I'm coming one more time. 
Now there is no way I have to describe this other than you're in a thick forest and a 30 mile an hour wind, a gust of wind suddenly starts blowing. That kind of a sound of wind came blowing into that arena. Now when it did, the people started screaming. I mean, they erupted in prayer. Now, can you imagine thousands of Brazilians screaming in prayer? I can. Okay, I know. <laughs> the wind was louder. And I'm standing on that platform and I'm literally frozen. I mean, the authority that was in that place, I have no dis way of describing it. And I remember hearing a whisper in my heart, I'm through with you. And I turned it over to the leader, right? So they whisked me off the platform, put me in the car, then shortly afterwards, they put the national singer, she was a soloist that night, and her husband in the car. She screams, did you hear the wind? Did you hear the wind? Now, I didn't want to be the first to say it, so I said, maybe it was a jet aircraft flying too low above the <laughs> arena. Well, she got mad at me. She goes, what are you talking about? I saw fire all around the arena. And she's going on and on and on. Her husband was a lot calmer, so he said, sir, that, that was no um, airplane. I said, how do you know? He said, there were security men, security men and policemen all around the outside of the arena. He said, most of them aren't even safe. They're union men. He said, when the wind began to blow and they heard it from the outside, they came running in to see what it was. He said, furthermore, I'm at the main soundboard to make sure my wife's volumes are right. He said, the whole time the wind blew, the decimal meters were at zero. Sid, I went back to my room that night and I, I worshiped God till 1.30 in the morning on the balcony of my hotel. The next morning, Saturday morning, same arena, same people. You cannot believe the salvations, the deliverances, the miracles that happened just because of holy awe. You know, 20 years later, I went down to 2016 to Goiânia, Brazil to speak to 12,000 pastors, right? Pastor who meets me, first thing out of his mouth, I was in the building when the wind blew in 1997. My life has never been the same. We had emails and letters about it for 20 years. This is the presence of the one we serve. This is... God is on purpose withheld that glorious presence to see if we would worship Him or worship what is so superficial in this world that people stand in awe of. I believe the Christian has the ability to go in our heart into the inner sanctuary and behold the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. If you look at Hophni and Phinehas, the sons of Eli, they're committing adultery with the women who line up at the tabernacle. A couple hundred years earlier, Nadab and Abihu come in with irreverence into that same tabernacle and are, and are struck dead. Now, did God strike them? No. You can sunbathe at the beach and enjoy it, but if you go 10,000 miles from the sun, you put yourself in harm's way. They put themselves in harm's way when they came in to the presence of God with irreverence. Well, if you look at Hophni and Phinehas, the word of the Lord was rare, so the presence of God had lifted. I believe God is going to restore His presence in such a way that it's going to get the attention of cities and nations in these coming days. For a while, believe it or not, it was difficult for John to get into the presence of God. One day, by accident, John immediately got into God's presence. Now it's instant, every time. Be right back. We will be right back to It's Supernatural. When you submit a prayer request at sidroth.org slash pray, we print it out and place it inside of this basket. The basket is then taken to our prayer room, where every morning each team member selects a stack of prayer requests, reads through them carefully, and prays for each one individually. So if you or someone you know needs prayer, please submit your prayer request to us at sidroth.org slash pray or by calling or texting to 704-943-6503. We now return to It's Supernatural. In John's brand new book, The Awe of God, and I'm telling you, you better get this, he teaches on amazing benefits when we walk in the fear of the Lord. John, define the fear of the Lord and the awe 
of God. Well, the fear and the awe of God are very synonymous, but let me say this, this is so important for everybody to understand. The fear of the Lord has nothing to do with being scared of God. When you look at Moses bringing Israel to the mountain, they all were scared of God and they drew back. Mm -hmm. Moses said in Exodus 20, 20, do not fear because God's come to test you. What's the test? To see if his fear is in you so that you do not sin. Now, wait a minute. Do not fear because God's come to see if his fear is in you. He's differentiating between being scared of God and the fear of the Lord. The person who is scared of God is something to hide. What does Adam do as soon as he sins? Right. He hides from the presence of the Lord. The person who fears God has nothing to hide. That person is terrified of being away from God. So the first definition of the awe of God is to be terrified of being away from Him. But when we fear God, we stand in awe, reverence, respect, honor, esteem Him more than anything or anyone else. So what is important to Him becomes important to us. What is not so important to Him is not so important to me. So this is why we love what He loves and we hate what He hates. Now, it's not that we dislike what He hates. We hate what he hates. You say God hates? Yes. God hates what undoes people, and that's called sin. Now, in legalism, you, you ever seen a legalistic person that goes, well, I fear God, that's why I hate them sinners over there. That person fears God not at all. He has no fear of God because he hates what God loves. God loves those people so much he sent his own son to die for them. What he hates is the sin that's unmaking them. And that's the difference. The person that doesn't fear God tolerates sin, dislikes sin. The person that fears God has a holy hatred of it and a passionate love for people. I'm taking you to 1999, Malaysia. What happened there? Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. It was a national meeting. Pastors and leaders came from all over the nation. It was the largest Bible school. That presence came in the meeting. I remember there were women four to five deep. The presence of God came in. Daddy came in. Within 30 seconds, I started walking down the platform. I had no idea what was about to happen. They were all on the floor. Within 30 seconds, nobody caught him. I saw literally three women on top of each other, and they all started laughing hysterically. It was like Daddy God came in to comfort his daughters. Then, all of a sudden, after about five minutes of that, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and he said, I'm coming differently. All of a sudden, I sensed that presence that I had sensed in Brazil. And I knew right away, get up, because I was sitting on the platform enjoying watching the girls get blessed. I got up, that presence came again, and now those women started screaming like they were on fire. It wasn't demonic, it was holy. And I remember walking back and forth on that platform, and out of my mouth came the words, this is the spirit of the fear of the Lord. And we walked out of that service, and there was a couple from India who were students in the Bible school in Kuala Lumpur, and the lady and the man and I just looked at each other, and she said, I feel so clean. And I went, oh my goodness, that describes what I felt in Brazil, in California, North Carolina, and here. Okay, I get it. So the next morning, I'm getting ready to play basketball with the Bible school students in Malaysia. I'm putting on my shorts, and the Holy Spirit said, son, read Psalm 19. I had no idea what I was going to read. So I go to Psalm 19, I get down to the ninth verse, and the psalmist says, the fear of the Lord is clean. And I went, wow! And then he said the words, enduring forever. And the Spirit of God spoke to my heart right there in that hotel room, and he said, Son, Lucifer led worship right before my throne. He beheld my glory. He was anointed. He did not fear me. He didn't endure in heaven forever. He said, A third of the angels surrounded my throne. They beheld my glory. They didn't fear me. They didn't endure forever. He said, Adam and Eve walked in the presence of my glory. They didn't fear me. They didn't endure in the garden forever. He said, every created being who surrounds my throne will be tested in the fear of the Lord. I started thinking after that. There are a lot of pastors. They've started ministry or ministers, started ministry, excited, wanting to help people, in love with Yeshua. But they didn't fear God. They didn't endure in the ministry forever. Barna has said over 40 million People have walked away from the faith in the United States in the last 23 years. Over 40 million. That is more than one out of every 10 people in the United States. Hmm. Half of those 40 million are now professing uh, spiritualists, agnostics, and atheists. 
Why? Because we have not brought a healthy balance of the holy fear of God into the church. The love of God keeps us from legalism. And we don't want legalism because that kills. But the fear of God keeps us from falling into the trap of lawlessness. And if you look at what God the Father said to Jesus, He said, because you have loved righteousness and hated sin, therefore God, even your God, has anointed you beyond your companions. When there was not a strong anointing on my life and I was praying hours a day, I said to God, I was frustrated, I said, why isn't there a stronger anointing on my life? And he said, because you tolerate sin, not only in your own life, but in the lives of others. And when I read that verse, he sent me to that verse, I realized that for me to see the anointing of God increase on my life so I can minister to people more effectively, I have to hate sin the way he hates sin, not just love righteousness the way he loves righteousness. John, very briefly. You found out how to get into the presence of God immediately. I used to struggle, Sid. And then one day I just thought, I'm not going to pray. I'm not going to sing. I'm just going to think about how awesome my dad is. And I started thinking about him putting the stars in the universe with his fingers, measuring the universe from his thumb to his pinky, weighing the water in the earth in the palm of his hands. And all of a sudden the presence of God comes. And I went, wait a minute, what? So the next day I thought, I'm going to try this again. So I'm out in my morning prayer time, right? And I did it again, and there's his presence again. The third day, I said, okay, this isn't right. What's going on? I used to struggle to get in your presence. Now it's so easy. And then the Holy Spirit said to me, son, how did Jesus teach his disciples to pray? And I started rec reciting the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, holy, hallowed be thy name. I went, oh my gosh, there it is. That word hallowed means to be kept holy is your name. I thought, Jesus, you taught your disciples that we are to come into the presence of God with holy fear. Okay, Jim Baker made a statement when John visited him when Jim was in prison that John says reverberated through his entire being. It shocked him. Be right back. We will be right back to It's Supernatural. Call or go online at SidRoth.org to get John Bevere's brand new book, The Awe of God, The Astounding Way a Healthy Fear of God Transforms Your Life. Plus, receive his four-part audio CD teaching series, Getting God's Attention, The Blessing of Obedience. Yours for a donation of $49. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9904. The Bible says that the beginning of knowing God in intimately, the starting place, is the holy awe or fear of God. Many, many people look at the fear of the Lord and they stay away from it, not realizing it is one of the most delightful things that God reveals to us as His children. If you long for a deeper relationship with God, John's brand new book and four-part audio CD teaching series will get you started right as you discover the difference between fear of the Lord and a spirit of fear. See why godly fear is foundational to have wisdom, understanding, knowledge, clarity, divine direction, and intimacy with God. See how the fear of God conforms you to the image of Jesus Christ. Abide in the fear of the Lord and you can receive over 40 Bible promises like longevity, confidence, and a friendship with God. Learn how trembling at God's Word really gets God's attention. Understand how 40 million people departed from the faith from 2000 to 2020, and the root cause could be a lack of fear of the Lord. Get on the inside track to know what is happening in the world as God shares His secrets with those who fear Him. Realize that even Jesus delights in the fear of the Lord. Have a healthy fear of God that frees you from all other fears. John Bevere also gives you five important learning tools at the end of each chapter to help you deepen your understanding and apply what the Spirit of God is teaching you. Get the holy awe of God. I believe it will change your life forever. Call or go online at SidRoth.org and receive the brand new book by John Bevere. The Awe of God, The Astounding Way a Healthy Fear of God Transforms Your Life. Plus, receive his four-part audio CD teaching series, Getting God's Attention, The Blessing of Obedience. Yours for a donation of $49. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9904. Or send your check to Sid Roth, It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9904. We now return to It's Supernatural. 
John, you visited Jim Baker when he was in prison. What shocked you? So he had read the first book I'd written in prison, asked that I would come see him. And I remember he sat down and the first words out of his mouth is, John, this prison was not God's judgment on my life. It was his mercy. He said, if I would have continued to live the way I was living, I would have ended up separated from God forever in hell. Well, he proceeded to tell me how Jesus came into his cell this first year of prison and delivered him. He told me about how they spent every day at least three hours in the, in the Gospels. And then after he told the whole story, when I felt comfortable, I said, Jim, I have a question. At what point did you fall out of love with Jesus? And he goes, I didn't. I said, Jim, did you hear what I just asked? I said, did, when did you fall out of love with Jesus? He said, John, I loved him all the way through it. Now I'm a little upset because I knew he committed adultery in 1983 and I knew he was not living right from 83 to 90. And I said, what do you mean? He said, John, I loved him all the way through it. He said, I didn't fear God. And I went, what? He said, John, there are millions of Americans just like me. They love Jesus, but they have no fear of God. And so here we have an aspect that the Apostle Paul writes about that matures our salvation, but we don't talk about it in our churches. And so why, we wonder why are 40 million people walking away from the faith? It's because we're not giving them that holy defense that keeps us from falling away. Let me ask you something you, that have been watching us. How about starting fresh right now? There's nothing you can do about the past, but the good news is the blood of Jesus, if you repent of sins, yes. wipes it away to the point that God doesn't have any memory of it anymore. And by the way, you're spending eternity. That means no end with God. That's very important to have a clean slate. Let's start fresh right now. Say this prayer out loud with me and believe it to the best of your ability. God doesn't ask for anything more. You can do that. Repeat it out loud. Very important because the Bible says do it. You have a fear of God, do what the Bible says do. Repeat out loud. Dear God. Dear God. I'm so sorry for my sins. I'm so sorry for my sins. I ask for your blood to wash them away. I ask for your blood to wash them away. I need a new beginning. I need a new beginning. And now that I'm starting fresh. And now that I'm starting fresh. Jesus, come and live inside of me. Jesus, come and live inside of me. I make you my savior from my sins. I make you my savior from my sins. But I now make you my Lord. But I now make you my Lord. Amen. 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 John, pray as God directs right now into the camera. I sure will. Heavenly Father, I thank you for my brother and my sister that's watching right now. And I thank you for those that even have come to know you just a moment ago from Sid's prayer. Father, I am asking that your spirit would fill that living room, that office, that kitchen, even now. Spirit of the living God, I'm asking you to manifest not only the holy fear of God, but the love of God in this person's life. Lord, I speak to the bondages. I speak to those things that have held this man or this woman back from giving themselves entirely to Jesus. I break the power of those bondages that go back from generation to generation to generation. Satan, you no longer own this man or this woman. They belong to God. And so in Jesus' name, we command your hold to be broken. And now, Heavenly Father, fill my brother and sister with the Holy Spirit of the fear of the Lord, with the awe of God, with the spirit of wisdom, counsel, might, knowledge, and understanding. And I thank you that Jesus, Yeshua, becomes real to them from this moment forward because of your Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I am so excited about Jesus. I pray that excitement fall on you right now. <laughs>